What's happening, people? Back with another reaction, back with some more acid techno, and it's gonna fit with a few videos I've done recently because I've talked about I was into punk rock a couple years before I was into acid techno. When I discovered acid techno, the vibe and sort of the atmosphere and the DIY nature of a lot of the acid techno that I discovered, it really gave me a similar sort of atmosphere and sentiment, and I was very much um, eager to pursue it because it did have this sort of outside the lines, not, you know, in the the spotlight and sort of a superstar, but it was like this, you know, we're sort of in the, the blue collar gutters of the, the music world and electronic, um, you know, labels and so on. Um, so that was part of what drew me to Acid Techno to begin with. Uh, and then, as I said, there's other tracks that have come out since then, including several by Chris Liberator and Sterling Moss in particular, uh, but as well as other people. You know, I think Geezer has a lot of tracks in that vein and so on. Um, but that sort of capture the essence and the ethos of punk rock and sort of the, the shared um, attitudes of these two musical communities, which again, have some specific overlap. It's not just Chris Liberator. I think there are others in the world of acid techno that have backgrounds in punk rock, certainly like other DJs and um, fans like me. Um, so I have no doubt of that. Uh, and we're going to listen to a tune today, again, by Chris Liberator and Sterling Moss, that to my mind perhaps catches and captures that acid techno punk rock vibe more than any other track, including others we've listened to, including Punk Attitude. This honestly just destroys it. Now, I'm gonna try to give you a little um, background on this before we start, because once it starts, I'm probably just gonna be rocking out and I cannot guarantee that I'm gonna be articulate in any way. Um, okay, so this came out 2012. It's a white label. It was only released white label. It's a limited edition. 100 copies. It's styled as Tantrum versus CUF. Uh, it's CUF. SUF. What the hell am I saying? Um, so yeah, it's a Stay Up Forever versus Tantrum, and I believe Tantrum was one of the labels that was releasing tunes by Sick Note. Now, Sick Note um, is a band that I don't believe is making music anymore. Uh, the last, their last releases seem to be right around the time this came out, 2012. Uh, but we're going to hear uh, an individual named Doghouse on the vocals because Chris and Sterling um, take their tune and including the vocals from, again, Doghouse of Sick Note uh, and make an acid techno punk rock fuck off track of just cascading destruction and intensity. So I hope you're prepared for this. As I said, once it starts, I may not be able to talk very much. I'm now seeing that I'm a silly, silly guy. And I'll tell you why in a moment, but first let's appreciate the other side where it says Tantrum versus SUF. Then we'll see my very silly uh, tendency, which is to write on a lot of white labels, usually just what the name of the track is and who it is. Oh, and by the way, in case you didn't know, this is fucking acid techno, and we've got a little Jolly Rogers skull and crossbones. Uh, just, you know, maybe not all that well drawn, but that was the vibe that I was getting here. This is piratical punk rock acid techno. And again, perhaps more of a punk rock attitude than any track I've ever heard, including punk rock or punk attitude. So let's do it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Number one, we're gonna burn the house down if I don't turn that down. Number two, it's 45. Jesus. My God. That kick. I'm gonna break my speakers, man. It's fucking avid. Sorry. Slipped into like a Hollywood version of an East Londoner. But already that pulse. And now we've got this dissonant synth melody creeping in. Ugh. Fire ignited. It's like someone took one of those barbecue lighters. Where's the acid engine? Okay. And already turning up the boilers. Listen to the frenetic, like tight acid work. Electric. There's like a sort of layer right at the trans right at the measure break. There, you hear that? 
the doghouse. Where you at, my guy? Dissonant synth melody, apes. The bubbling, roiling acid, apes. His voice, and it's sort of, it's got sass, it's got attitude. You know it's ironic, you know that use of the word righteous is sarcastic. Pulls a lot of it out, cleans it up. It's anticipatory though, you know. You're well aware that the clouds are descending. You know the acid rain is going to rush back in. I try not to. Uh, shout out to that very brief pause. Acid sting. Bring everything back. That was brilliant. <laughs> I love that. In reverse. Ah, come on. Shout out to Doghouse for the strong, the screaming vocals. It's like shouting, it's sort of in between saying shouting or screaming. It's like that high kind of stabby layer and then there's still that bubbling, roiling layer, although it is like turned down right now. We, we calmly, we go out of that. Not what you thought, you thought it was going to be a big epic build up drop. No, we're going to go calmly, we're going to keep things stripped down, we're going to go, we're going to have another little moment, and then fuck off, everything's coming back so you better be ready. Getting, uh, it's right on the edge, you know it. Fucking hell. Again, ask Schnoots. What sound are you after when you really want to get the best of the best acid techno? I point to records like this. I don't say anything. I just this, this. Again, the way the the acid, that dissonant layer, and his vocals, the three elements, those three elements, the way they interact and mesh. Right on the edge, but I love it. It's an American group, I don't think they exist anymore. They're called the Nerve Agents. Sometimes, like, their songs have that. Or, like, Born Against, you know, Born Against, fucking hell. Yeah, that's sort of like shouting right on the edge, being like, can you can your listeners handle it? But it's good. It fits. Oh. And listen, I'm like talking away about like other bands. Listen to the electricity, like even after it sort of de-escalates a little. That like it's almost like metallic acid. Like, you know, sort of fragmenting and scattering that vocal. So good. So again, if you're mixing out here, like, or if you're not using this to end your set, which you could, it's one of those, oh my god, what do you follow that with? But if you are mixing out, you're probably on your way out now, but you want to, like, double drop for a long distance because you want that and his vocals toying with the incoming track. And that like electricity is still there. The 
admittedly, uh, you know, if you don't have this tune and you're a big fan, I do apologize. It's going to be hard to get. Right now, there are no copies available. There are only 100 copies, and I think copies on Discogs have actually gone for over $100, so, yeah. It's not going to be easy to get if you don't have it. I do apologize. You know, it's not something I relish. Like, I think some DJs get very excited when they have a track that, oh, nobody knows this and no one else has it. It's not really like that for me, although I'm not really talking shit, you know, so I get what it's like to have a track that, you know, no one else seems to play, maybe they don't have it, whatever, and you're like, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna go off. I get what it is to be excited about a track in that way, but, you know, over the years, I've always, like, included track lists in every mix that I post, like, the people who made the tunes and the labels deserve the credit in the first place, and secondarily, like, I'm not... I don't see myself, I never have, in competition with other DJs. You know, maybe that's why I don't play all that many gigs. Um, last gig I played was 2017. Um, but the reality is, it's just for me, it's about the music. So if someone comes up to me, other DJ or just someone in the crowd, like, hey, what was that tune? I'm going to tell you every time. I'm never going to hide it. Um, so I do want to play tracks that are amazing and great, uh, but I don't mean to like, oh, by the way, this listen to this tune, by the way, also, you can't get it. Um, that's not really uh, what I'm trying to do. But uh, like I said, it is just a very rare record, so it's possible another copy might become might become available. You know, put it in your want list, bird dog it every so often, just keep checking, you know, once a week or something like that. Um, I've gotten records that way. There are tunes that there were no copies available, and then I just kept checking in, kept checking in, kept bird dogging them, and oh shit, there's a near mint copy available. Maybe it's going to be 35 euro or you know, more than that, whatever. Um, but if you really love the music, if you really want to have a record, sometimes you just have to make that commitment and get it done. So yeah, uh, hopefully if you like that and you don't have it, that might happen to you in the future. If you do have it, you probably know how amazing this is even before you watch this reaction. If you have been watching, I really appreciate it. Um, again, the channel's getting a little more interaction now. I'm really appreciating it. Um, just love that there are tunes that people want to listen to. I love that there are people who want to sort of, you know, hear this crazy DJ who's been mixing these tunes for about 25 years. Um, that they might hear what, or might be keen to hear what I had to say about them. So, big ups to all of you. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you have any specific requests or recommendations. I'd love to hear any feedback. Other than that, have a good day, have a good night. I will see you next time. Peace.